I am the Austin Reviewer. We're looking at a very unique adaptation of Pride and Prejudice today. We are looking at one that is not only a modern adaptation set in the modern day, but also one that is a musical. There's not that many of them, so by this point you should know what I'm talking about. Pride and Prejudice, a Bollywood film adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. Now this one, uh, before I go into the synopsis, I will say a couple things about how things will change a little bit because it has a bit more to do, instead of with literal setting and dress and language, with the appropriateness in the chosen current setting, as well as how logical of an adaptation it is. Like, does it make sense to have put it in this context, or does certain actions of the characters fall apart inside of the new context? So, let's get into it. So first, the synopsis. This one does accelerate the timeline a little bit, so instead of taking place over the course of many, many months, it takes place over the course of... Uh, well, the first part is the first several months of their acquaintance are condensed into a two-week period, and then the... Uh, it doesn't actually determine what length of time passes for over the rest of the course, so the final showdown where it was, again, months in the book is reduced into the space of probably a week or less. So there is that to go with, but well, we'll, we'll go into actual, see how it goes. So the film opens with uh, Lalita, which is, I'm probably going to just start referring to her as Lizzie for the rest of this, so if I'm going back and forth, that's why. Uh, but a montage of her uh, riding on a cart, kind of helping her father out with uh, their farm that they own, and uh, the Darcy and the Bingleys arrive uh, in India. They are there because um, Charles Bingley, which is not actually his name, but la 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 la, is the best man at a friend's wedding, and Darcy is there accompanying him. Darcy's in the uh, hotel and real estate business. So this is the person that is getting married, which is never, I think, actually stated, and it doesn't actually correspond directly to anyone in the book, is a very good friend of Elizabeth and Jane's and the families. So they meet at the wedding, which is a replacement for the uh, Meriton Ball. Uh, of course, they have before this, uh, the mother is very obsessed with, there's lots of people there that they should meet, and especially this uh, young man, the Bingley, so... She wants Jane to catch the attention because I guess that's another thing I should say is I'm not going to comment really on the accuracy of the accents of the characters or the culture that they've actually set it in. I am taking the culture as presented as being somewhat accurate because I don't know that much about Indian culture. I'm obviously not Indian, so yeah, it's, I don't I don't think I really have any place to comment on it. It's not something that I've deliberately looked up. So I'm just going with the fact that this was a Bollywood production, they know their own culture, and they want, that's how they wanted to portray it, so that's what they did. So they're at the wedding, and uh, this is where we get one of the first musical numbers, where uh, Bingley and the other, some of the other men at the party do a dance when then they see the girls, and they all dance together and stuff. Uh, Bingley does actually make Darcy dance with uh, Lizzie in this particular time. They then uh, meet the Bennets proper. They did drop Kitty straight up out of the story, but that usually happens with a lot of more modern adaptations. She's one of the least impactful characters, so it's fairly easy to just... And then they have the uh, random number with Lizzie, the friend that's getting married, and I think the person that's playing Charlotte. I've seen this scene many times, and I still for the life of me cannot figure out who's in it. It's by no means a necessary number. It is quite funny though, and there's a, a point where this whole group of guys come in and they're all cross-dressed and really exaggerated. It's, it's quite funny. So Bingley is already quite smitten with uh, Jane, and I think uh, her name is Jaya in this, but again, I'm probably gonna keep calling her Jane. So he wants to dance with her, uh, they're doing that. 
Lizzie and Charlotte see Darcy. He comes up to talk to them. He tries to talk to Elizabeth, but ends up insulting her with uh, implying a little too strongly, and they leave without intending to, that uh, he thinks that the people of India are much simpler and more traditional. And uh, this obviously rubs her quite well the wrong way, and she brushes him off. When they're leaving that night, uh, Bingley invites Jaya or Jane to go with them to see another hotel that Darcy is thinking of buying. Uh, Mr. Bennet states that this probably wouldn't be appropriate, so they extend the invitation to include Lizzie as well. So they go off. This is where uh, you get some probably what I think is one of the closest pulls kind of from the book is a kind of a three-way that devolves into more of just a two-way argument between or a witty ban banter between Darcy, Caroline, and Elizabeth. Lizzie, whatever. You know what I mean. I'm going to keep doing that probably. About how, what his impressions of India are. She calls him out on, he wants to have a hotel there to bring people in, but it's not actually for India. It's for people that come that don't want to actually have to deal with the people and the culture that's actually there. It just has a little bit of Indian sprinkled in, which is a somewhat fair argument. And he does see the uh, point in it. While they are there, uh, Mr. Wickham shows up, tells the story about uh, Darcy getting rid of him after his father passed away because he used to be a caddy and have a job at the, one of their hotels and stuff. And uh, she believes him, of course. She doesn't necessarily have a reason not to at this point. She doesn't like Darcy and uh, she invites Wickham to go meet uh, her at her hometown because they're somewhere else. Uh, when they arrive there, though, they find out that uh, the house is being cleaned meticulously because Mr. Collins is coming to visit, who is living in America and stuff, and he's coming because he wants to find a wife. They have a meal, and he implies he's kind of interested in Jane, but uh, the mother shuffles him off on to Lizzie, and uh, that night Elizabeth is kind of agonizing over this and her sisters come and they do another quite fun musical number about uh, off of something that he said with there being no life without wife. So they do a whole song number about it and uh, Elizabeth sings about what she is interested in with a man with being an equal partner and being someone that's intelligent and doesn't just want her as a trophy and someone to look pretty and just do well the whole house chores and stuff like that. After this she has a dream that she's going to marry Mr. Wickham but it turns into a nightmare where she marries Darcy instead. Uh, Wickham arrives at their home. Her mother doesn't want her to, him to stay because he'll distract the girls from Mr. Collins but the dad allows it and then uh, even invites him to go with them to uh, a party that they're going to that night, which kind of does the double for the Netherfield Ball. So while they're there, she dances with uh, Mr. Collins, and then she dances with uh, Darcy after being rescued by Charlotte, and he comes and asks without her knowing what to do. Uh, she then dances with Wickham, kind of switches in the middle of it. Uh, the Bingleys and Darcy come for dinner the next day. Mary does a quite ridiculous uh, snake dance. Wickham can't have the meal with them, of course, because of Darcy being there. So he and uh, Lydia go out on the town. The next morning, uh, Mr. Collins comes to propose to Lizzie. She refuses. The mother is upset about this. The, the father backs her up. Uh, Mr. Collins leaves. Bingley arrives and says that he has to leave earlier than expected. Uh, they then get word that Mr. Collins has proposed to Charlotte and she has accepted. Lizzie talks to Wickham about this, about her kind of disillusionment with what her friend has done. Uh, he then informs her that he has to leave as well. This is where you get kind of an indeterminate amount of time. They don't show an exact passing. You see them kind of a little bit listless and upset. The girls were both promised emails, neither of them receive any, though Lydia does get a few messages from uh, Wickham, unbeknownst to her family. They then get a call that uh, Charlotte has invited them to go to her wedding in America, and they can stop over in London, where Bingley lives. On the stopover in England, they um, meet Caroline, who tells them that Bingley is currently in America, his parents are looking for a wife for him there. 
Uh, they then go to fly to America, but end up running into Darcy, who was at a meeting in England, gives up his seat to uh, Mrs. Bennett, so he can sit next to uh, Lizzie, and they talk for most of the flight. They arrive in America, Mr. Collins shows them his house, which is his pride and joy, and all the closets and the where the gym's going to be in the pool and all that fun stuff. They then go to see the hotel. She meets Darcy's mother, who is kind of mostly Lady Catherine. The Charlotte teases Lizzie about Mr. Darcy liking her. She denies this until he calls and invites her to go out. So they go on sightseeing and helicopter rides and museums and they talk and they go out to a restaurant and they get to actually know each other a little better and start to respect each other as persons. Uh, they, she also met Georgiana when they met the mother. Uh, they have the wedding where Mrs. Darcy introduces Elizabeth to the girl that she's got her eye on for Darcy. And after this, then, uh, Elizabeth is talking to, Elizabeth is talking to Georgiana and Georgiana tells her that Darcy and Bingley aren't currently on speaking terms because Darcy convinced Bingley not to marry a girl that he viewed as just a gold digger. Lizzie is very upset by this and calls him out for it and uh, they all go back to England. Darcy follows them there where he learns that Lydia has been meeting up with Wickham while they were in England and has actually run off with him now. He comes to tell Lizzie about this because he's trying to defend himself and he tells her that the reason why he had gotten rid of Wickham was because he had gotten Georgiana pregnant when she was 16 and had tried to marry her for to get at the family money. They then go out and they are actually able to find him. Darcy beats him up a little bit. Elizabeth smacks him for his bad behavior. Uh, he then tells her that it was always her, so Lydia smacks him as well. They go back to their f uh, family where they find out that Bingley has arrived and has proposed to Jane, who has accepted. So they're going to have a wedding, so they go back to India. And uh, while they're there, the wedding is going to go on, and Darcy shows up actually embracing more of the Indian culture. So then, exactly how it happens, they don't quite go into that. It's just implied that he wants to marry her, and they end up apparently getting married at the same time and you get a nice closing musical number, and that's the movie. This was an interesting one as far as the adaptation goes because they actually, with the culture that they portray, it actually fits really well with a lot of the character portrayal and some of the plots in the book, with having um, these kind of almost arranged marriages being a common in-world thing. It makes some sense, the quick engagements and stuff that happen, which actually works remarkably well. They do, again, roll some events together, like they uh, put kind of Pemberley and Rosings all into one. As I said, the character of Mrs. Darcy doesn't play it all into the book, so they basically took Lady Catherine but gave it her more of a maternal role to kind of justify her attempts at interference with Darcy's life. Uh, they drop Colonel Fitzwilliam altogether, though they do make up for that, so they kind of combine that character in with Georgiana. Uh, most of the characters are extremely faithful to the feeling you get of them in the book. The only exception to this, I think, is actually Mr. Bennett. There's times where he's really spot on, like making jokes at his wife's expense that go right over her head and stuff like that, but they miss a little bit of where he was just kind of, he let them be ridiculous in the book and he'd just laugh at them. That's actually one of the few faults that Elizabeth finds with his character is that he has the power of mind that he could have checked his wife and the sillier of the daughters or at least given them more of an air of respectability but he didn't take that path. He just allowed them to be ridiculous and crazy and make near fools of themselves at times. So that is probably the biggest aside from the characters that don't exist at all. Deviation. The other one that's a little, doesn't really have any source in the book, is the marriage at the beginning, which you don't really hear anything about afterwards. Though it does make for a useful setting for why they've come to India, and the friend seeing the other friend happy, and you know, maybe I would like to get married too, and here's this really great girl that he can talk to, and it does a lot more, like they notice the girls because of their beauty, but it 
goes a lot more pointedly into expressing the mutual attraction and intelligence between the characters, which is there in the book, but some movies you do get a little bit more of a feeling that it is more of just a beauty thing, which it certainly is more with Mr. Collins, which is kind of an interesting contrast to them, but it doesn't actually happen as much between the main characters. There weren't actually very many notes on this one because it is quite close. It's a very, very close adaptation considering that it's not the exact same setting, but the culture of the India that they're portraying, or the Indian culture they're portraying, along with the elements that they take out of the story, make a lot of sense when they're put together like that. So they, they mesh really well. The musical numbers are quite fun. You get a little more insight into the characters, kind of, why Elizabeth has this objection to Mr. Collins. I mean, you see he's an idiot, but it's... He's a harmless idiot, which is what he is in the book. He's kind of pompous and very silly, and they do him quite well with having him have some justification, kind of, in his mind at least, but he's also clueless to the goings-on of people around him, and yeah, it's it's quite well done. The characters are all very well done. Um, the only other thing as far as the characters goes is I would say that Darcy gets taken with Elizabeth a little bit too fast, so I would have change that slightly, maybe make it so he doesn't even hardly notice her at first. But yeah, this was a very, very good book. Cinematography, the costumes, everything was beautiful. Yeah, the only trouble I really found with um, the production value itself was there's a couple times during the um, musical numbers where you have a chorus where there's, you can tell there's a little bit of lip syncing going on and there's just a couple of instances where it's not quite spot on. But all things considered, it's that's it's hardly noticeable unless you're really, really paying attention. So as far as just a movie goes, it's a gorgeous movie. It's funny, it's got some drama, but it's all very believable. It flows together. I do think that if you are acquainted with Pride and Prejudice, you'd be able to tell that you're watching Pride and Prejudice pretty fast, even if you hadn't seen the title. But... Uh, yeah, it's a very, very close adaptation. The setting makes sense for the adaptation. The characters come through with a few minor exceptions here and there. Uh, the dialogue, I thought, did pretty well. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more on the uh, witty banter side, but you do also get the feeling with the way they portray the characters, and you see Elizabeth helping her father out with, uh, like, talking about some of the business stuff when the other characters are doing things. Well, they're kind of in the background, other characters are the ones doing the talking that you can tell that they're doing these things. So you can see evidence of the intelligence and the respect that these characters have in like their community and the people that they love and stuff, which is really well done. It speaks a lot of volumes without of them without having to have tons of dialogue. So I would have liked to have seen some more of the witty banter, but the way they did the characters and showed their intelligence was already quite well done, so I can't really fault them there. Uh, there were points with the plot that the flow did seem a little bit fast, but hey, it was I thought it was pretty good. Basically perfect score all the way across as far as just a film goes. Uh, it did lose a couple of points uh, in some of the character accuracy and portray um, personality categories, just because those little issues with uh, Mr. Bennett and uh, Mr. Darcy kind of near the beginning. They don't really detract from the story, but they're not quite what I would consider perfect. So it did end up getting a couple of twos. Um, I also gave the plot flow to mostly because there are a lot of events in the book that do, s or not in the book, sorry, in the film that do seem to go a little fast, like they, it, it just happens quite quickly. When it, it is months and months in the actual novel, so that does have some effect for me. I would have liked to have seen more of the witty banter, so some of the dialogue got a knock there. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, 30 points for just it as a film, 36 points for it as an adaptation, giving it a total score of 66, and if you're wondering, yes, that does include my point. I do actually genuinely enjoy watching this movie and it's a fun movie to watch. So thank you so much for watching. I remain as ever until the next time we meet, The Austin Reviewer. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more fun.